Let's talk today about the College of Tragedy Bard from Tal'Dorei Reborn, the Critical Role book, today on Flute Sloot. I have an article that accompanies this video where I've gone through all the Tal'Dorei Reborn subclasses, rated them, and analyzed them, so be sure to look in the description down below for the link to that. Not all grand stories end in triumph and glory. The College of Tragedy embraces the failures as well as the joy and delight of battle and adventuring. They're storytellers and they weave magic through their stories and their eloquence. They're dramatic and devastating. At level 3, when you get the subclass, you get a few abilities. First is Poetry in Misery. Whenever you or an ally within 30 feet of you rolls a 1 on the d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or a saving throw, you can use your reaction to soliloquize and regain one expended use of your bardic inspiration feature. This is a lot of fun because usually 1s are just horrible and people don't like them, but you could actually celebrate them with your reaction to regain bardic inspiration. Funny enough, this would actually be good incentive to play a tragedy bard when you're in a larger party and your DM allows everyone to roll skill checks like simultaneously instead of like one person in the party rolling one because you're actually incentivized to roll a lot of skill checks that are fairly innocuous or don't matter so that you can roll a one and regain your bardic inspiration. So it's kind of a bag of rats type situation. If you're not familiar with that, it's based on having a bag of rats if you have an ability it's like every time you kill a creature you can regain hit points or something like that so you have a bag of rats so you can just kill them and regain hit points you probably won't be able to game this for very long before your dm is just going to say don't try to abuse this ability please also at level three you get sorrowful fate when you or an ally you can see forces a creature to make a saving throw you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration to change the type of saving throw to a charisma save instead wow if the target fails this save roll a bardic inspiration die the target takes psychic damage equal to the result and is plagued with regret for one minute if the target is reduced to zero hit points during this time and they can speak they are magically compelled to utter darkly poetic final words before succumbing to their injuries and you can do this once per short rest it's really good to be able to change a save saving throw to a charisma save instead because often creatures don't have as good of a charisma save versus what the spells save would normally be about. It also doesn't have to be for a spell. Any sort of effect of your ally forcing a saving throw, you can make it a charisma save. Remember it requires one use of your bardic inspiration to activate the ability, and then if they fail it says to roll a bardic inspiration die for how much psychic damage they take. I don't know if that's the same as expending a bardic inspiration die. So I think you still just use one bardic inspiration for this ability. And then if they fail, you just roll a bardic inspiration to see how much damage they do, but you don't lose that second bardic inspiration. At level six, you get Tale of Hubris. When a creature scores a critical hit against you or an ally within 60 feet of you that you can see, you can use your reaction and expend one use of your bardic inspiration to target the attacking creature and evoke the story of their downfall. For one minute or until the target suffers a critical hit, any weapon attack against the target scores a critical hit on a roll of 18 to 20, and then at level 14, this improves to a crit range of 17 to 20. So again, when you would usually just completely be sad when an enemy lands a critical hit on you or your allies, you might actually be a little bit excited because you're going to curse that enemy to be crit more easily until the next time they're crit. You also get impending misfortune. When you make an attack roll or a saving throw, you can gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll, but the next attack roll or saving throw you make takes a minus 10 penalty. If not used, this penalty disappears when you finish a short or long rest. Also, you can't use the feature a second time until you finish a short or long rest or until you are reduced to zero hit points i love that last part where to regain this ability of impending misfortune being reduced to zero hit points actually helps you to use this ability again i think that's super funny and thematic for this subclass so no action economy needed just when you make an attack roll or saving throw you can choose to gain plus 10 then the minus 10 penalty comes on the next attack roll or saving throw you make but here's the thing if you time it right, you might not have another attack or saving throw before your next short rest or long rest. So if you time it right in the battle, you might never see that negative 10. You just might get the plus 10 to a maybe a concentration constitution saving throw or to a spell attack that you just need to land and then the minus 10 never comes up. Or you could use the minus 10 on something that doesn't really matter. Like you could spend your turn making an attack when it's not your optimal choice just to get the negative 10 out of the way. Also, after combat, you could try to attack someone on your team, but then just take the minus 10. So again, it's really gamey, this subclass in a few ways, but still very thematic and fun to try to turn these downer moments into triumphs later or turn temporary triumphs into a dread of what's to come after of a penalty. Lastly, because bards don't get a lot of features in their subclasses, we have Nimbus of Pathos. You can touch a willing creature as an action and empower it with tragic heroism. 
For one minute, the creature is surrounded by mournful music and ghostly singing, granting it the following benefits and drawbacks. So you touch them, give them these benefits and drawbacks for one minute. The creature has a plus four to AC. Nice. Advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Very nice. When the creature hits a target with a weapon, attack, or spell attack, the target takes an extra 1d10 radiant damage. Wow, this is great. But then any weapon attack against the creature scores a crit on 18 to 20. Ooh, so you can get crit more easily. But it won't matter if you get crit so easily because also when the effect ends, the creature immediately drops to zero hit points and is dying. So once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So basically you empower someone with ephemeral might, but they will drop and start dying once it is over. Keep in mind, you could use a death ward spell if you wanted to use your magical secrets to learn death ward. So you could death ward someone and then use Nimbus of Pathos so that they are good to go. They just end up with one hit point instead of zero. Additionally, you could use this ability on a creature whose hit points are already very low. So when they drop to zero hit points, maybe they just lose 10 hit points at the end and then you, you revive them with a healing word or something. This is pretty strong if you have Eldritch Blast. So if you multi-classed with like Hexblade Warlock or something so that you could get Hexblade's Curse, cast Hex, also gain a 1d10 radiant damage to all of your weapon or spell attacks, Eldritch Blasts included, you could really stack up a lot of damage here. Your AC's up, your attack rolls have advantage, saving throws have advantage. It's pretty good. If this is a boss fight, I don't know why you wouldn't use this. You might as well use it and drop when it's over. You could use magical secrets to learn the contingency spell. So anytime you cast Nimbus of Pathos on yourself, you also activate a death ward on yourself. Or maybe you cast death ward on yourself and then your contingency is when your death ward is used you immediately gain your second death ward from contingency. There's a lot of fun you could have with this and it gets my brain going because the downside doesn't have to be much of a downside if you play it right. You might not actually get attacked to be crit because you're not a frontliner. Obviously you could use it on one of your frontliners so that they might get crit more often, but maybe it's worth it for the plus four AC and saving throw advantage, attack advantage and extra damage. It can really add up. So I really like this ability. It's a lot of fun to imagine the downsides and try to take maximum advantage of the upsides. So I love this subclass. It's a little bit too dependent on some gamey features and some party composition. I love the theme. It's very inventive. I score it with a four out of five and it's actually the first bard that's made me be like, oh, I really want to play this. I've never played a bard before. I've made bard characters just when I used to make characters like every day when I was new to 5e and I was just obsessed with it, but I've never played a bard. This is the one I would want to play. So what do you think of this subclass? Is there any detail that I missed? I've got other Taldori subclass reviews and analyses in some other videos and don't forget to bookmark and check out the article I mentioned go to the description below and check out my wife Opal's videos and articles as well because she's delightful don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video have a good adventure this weekend bye